Welcome as we gather for worship this morning at Marple Presbyterian Church. We are glad with, you're with us, whether you are here in the sanctuary or whether you are worshiping with us online. My name's Pam McShane. I am the bridge pastor here at Marple. Um, and we are entering in a season of transitions. We are transitioning um, today from spring until summer. And that means that you'll notice a couple of small changes in the bulletin as we sing a couple of different responses that we'll be singing for the next couple of months. Um, today, we are recognizing transitions in the lives of the kids in our congregation as they end one school year, move to another, um, and recognizing some graduations as well. Um, we are recognizing a transitions in the life of the church as we ordain and install new officers. So there's a lot of transition, moving from one thing into another thing in our service today. And um, we hope that you will celebrate all these things with us. We want to say thanks to everybody who participated in the Strawberry Festival um, on Friday. What a fun day that was. As all kinds of people showed up to help and all kinds of people showed up to eat strawberries and ice cream and bounce and moon bounces and have good conver conversations. Want to give a special shout out to Mac Smith, who was here, what, Mac, from five in the morning on through the day and continued to serve and clean up yesterday and through a party. So thanks to Mac um, and to all of you who were part of the Strawberry Festival celebration. As we look ahead, next week we will be celebrating the sacrament of baptism, and we invite you to be here for that. Is there any, are there any other announcements to be made this morning? Mac. I also want to thank everyone who participated, who helped me out slicing strawberries, cooking food. Uh, it was quite a big production. You did really well. A lot of people we did well financially. And as always, I bought too many strawberries. So uh, I will be selling them in the back for $2 for the big box. Um, Two bucks a box, strawberries for sale, following worship this morning. Um, so take some home and enjoy the bounty at a price that you can't beat. Are there any other announcements? And let us prepare ourselves for worship. morning. Please rise if you are able and join in our call to worship. Blessed is the one who calls us out of our comfort zones. Blessed is the one who guides us to new places. Blessed is the one who creates a way for us even through the wilderness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please remain standing and join in the opening hymn as printed in the bulletin.
please pray with me. The opening prayer is printed in the bulletin. Mighty and saving God, you are the one who sets us free with the pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. You guide us into new places. You prepare a safe way for us, even when we can't see a way ahead. Help us to trust you and follow you wherever you lead us, hoping in your promises, confident in your steadfast love. Amen. Please be seated. to my eyes, Lord, the blessing of seeing your face. In all around me, the light of your glorious grace. Help me to see the needs of your people and be ready to go, Lord, wherever your spirit leads me. Give to my hands, Lord, the blessing of doing your will, bringing your touch where it's needed to soothe every ill. Help me to heal the pain of your people and be ready to serve, Lord, wherever your spirit leads me. My feet, Lord, the blessing of walking your way, going wherever you lead me throughout the whole day. Show me the paths that lead where your people need me. Mind your own footsteps wherever your spirit leads me. Give to my mouth, Lord, the courage to speak of your cross, boldly proclaiming your death was a gain, not a loss, that through your blood true justice and mercy may be, building your kingdom wherever your spirit leads me. Give to my heart, Lord, the grace to rejoice in your love, showing forgiveness and mercy and grace from above, that by your word I'll share in the joys you give free. Help me to go, Lord, wherever your spirit leads me. Jesus, Lord, take me, I offer my whole life to you, and by my service I'll show that I'm faithful and true. Help me to live and praise you, please, Lord, set me free, that you may use me. Wherever your spirit needs me. Amen. Thank you, Ryan and Susan. 
When we move from one place to another, we find that there are things that we need to leave behind as we move into a new place. So I invite you in this morning to think about what it is that you need to leave behind. Old pains, old frustrations, old habits. And come prepared to be renewed. Let us pray together. You give us a vision of a new world, O oh God, yet we find it so easy to abide in the old. You promised your presence among us, yet we seek our own way out of the wilderness. Wipe away our fear of the unknown and our obsession with the known. Make us a pilgrim people. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, hear this good news, that the God who challenges us is also the God who encourages us, that the God who confronts us is also the God who accepts us. Be assured that God is with us even now, accepting, guiding, and forgiving. Thanks be to God. to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. There's a second verse to that too. Maybe we'll go to that next week. <laughs> As Christ has shared his peace with us, so let us share that peace with one another. May the peace of God be with you all. Oh, absolutely. Uh, in for many years past, but not in the last couple of years, um, we used to do an annual sort of end of the CE year wrap up where we would recognize our graduating seniors and certain uh, members of our Sunday school who were reaching certain milestones in their development and thank all of the people involved in making those programs happen. So we're bringing it back as part of our transition Sunday this Sunday, um, recognizing not only the obvious transitions of children growing up to exceptional young people, but um, 
to recognize the own transitions going on in our lives as we continue to serve God in this place and amongst these people. Um, this morning, our first recognitions are for our high school graduates, specifically, um, if you look in, or and college, if you look in the bulletin, there's a printout of, of everyone that is, uh, is moving on from high school, and Emma Yasko, who is getting her master's and moving on to a, a, another postgraduate uh, program in the fall. Um, because of scheduling, we have broken up the recognitions a little bit, so we will be specifically focusing on Colin this morning. And um, to his, I'm sure, great embarrassment, we have a video that we've made for him, uh, which shows his growth from a very young and enthusiastic uh, kid when Ben and I first started doing VBS here through um, his Eagle Scout program that we just attended uh, last weekend, I think, and um, just an amazing, amazing individual to um, to teach, to lead, and now to work with. Um, and I'm really looking forward to having him join us as a junior youth leader next year. And uh, that way he can play the sports with all the kids and I can sit. So um, I will let Ben show the video and then we'll call Colin up. Thank you. <clears throat> Pretty good. A tall, tall, coordinated. Occasionally, even dare I say it, cool. He wasn't always like this. Um, don't hurt yourself, okay? Another year or two, you'll be able to do that on your own. You got chop them feet. a little bit.
God, you have given us a mind's eye that can, that can see things not only as they are, but as they could be. You have given us a mind's eye that can see colors on a blank piece of paper. You have given us a mind's eye that can look at a blueprint and see the walls, going, see the walls go up. Imagination is a gift from you, God. It is a present. Let us use it to see what we can do with our lives. Let us use it to celebrate one another. Let us use it to see you in all things and all places and all people. You, you used your imagination to create our, our work and all that, it, that all that is in it. You have given us your holy word to guide us. Help us to create something good. Amen.
might be just mad.
bountiful God, you give us without, without measure. measure. May, May your, your giving, giving reflect, reflect your, your generosity. generosity. May, May our, our lives overflow with, with your deep, deep love. love. Use, Use our, our lives and the gifts we bring today to share your blessing throughout the earth. Amen. Amen. Open our eyes, O oh God. Open our hearts, open our minds, that we may hear your word, that we may see the ways that you guide us, whether with a pillar of cloud and fire or with different signs. Help us to be aware that you guide us always. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is a little bit different than what's printed in the uh, bulletin. It's Exodus 13, verses 17 to 22. This is the word of the Lord. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was nearer. For, the God, for God thought, if the people face war, they may change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people about by the roundabout way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of the land of Egypt, prepared for battle. And Moses took with him the bones of Joseph, who had required a solemn oath of the Israelites, saying, God will surely take notice of you, and then you must carry my bones with you from here. They set out from Succoth and camped in Ethan. 
on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they might travel by day and by night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. This is the word of the Lord. This morning here at Marple, we're recognizing a lot of transitions. There are the life transitions of our kids as they grow up and begin school and finish high school and move on to whatever's next. There are transitions in God's call in our lives as we recognize the leadership of our youth leaders, but also ordain a new elder and a new deacon this morning and recognize that God's calling these folks in a new way. But those are just the transitions that we're recognizing. There are a lot of other transitions in our lives too. We go through transition when we go through one job to another, when we move from one home to another. We go through transition when we get married or when we get divorced. We go through transition when we retire, when we welcome a new child into our lives when we say goodbye to someone we loved. Transitions are part of life. They're part of life, but that doesn't always mean that we like them. Because transitions can mean change for us, leaving behind what was familiar and stepping into unknown territory. They can be exciting, but they can also be kind of scary. I remember wa working with a group of high school seniors several years ago as we prepared for baccalaureate at Springfield High School, only a couple of days before graduation, and I asked them how they were feeling, expecting to hear things like, great, I can't wait. What I heard instead was, I'm a little bit scared. I've lived here all my life. I know these people. I don't know what it's going to be like when I'm someplace else out there on my own. They hadn't experienced life on the other side of that dividing line of change, and they didn't know what it would bring. I think there's a piece of us that also expects transitions to be instantaneous as we move from one way of being to another, like just stepping across a line and that change is accomplished. You know, like when you flip the, the tassel from one side to the other at graduation, there it's done. But the reality is a lot more complicated than that. A number of years ago, a man named William Bridges wrote, wrote a book called Transitions, Making Sense of Life's Changes. And in this book, he makes a distinction between change and transition. The change is when something external to us changes, say when we graduate from high school, or in the case of this church, when a pastor leaves a congregation, or in this morning scripture, when the Israelites leave their place of slavery in Egypt and step in to the edge of the wilderness. And sometimes there is a clear dividing line between what was and what will be. But after we cross that dividing line, we don't enter fully into a new place. Instead, we enter what Bridges calls a liminal zone, a time of change when the change has happened on the outside, but our minds and our emotions are still adjusting to what that change has meant for us. That mental and emotional, and I would add spiritual, catch-up time is the process of transition as you move from one way of being to another. And that transition takes time. 
I'm willing to bet that when the Israelites left slavery behind in Egypt, they thought they would be stepping into that promised land, if not the next day, then at least within the next couple of weeks. After all, if you look at a map, if you look at the distance they had to travel, it isn't very far. But the actual journey, the Bible tells us, took them 40 years, 40 years, a lifetime in those days. Why in the world did it take them so long? Well, in Exodus 13, 17, it says that God took them a long way around because he was afraid that if they faced opposition in war from the Philistines, they'd give up and they'd go back to Egypt. Turns out, that that probably was a realistic concern. And we'll hear more about that in the next few, month, few weeks. But I think there's another piece to be added on here. When they left Egypt, the Israelites were a ragtag bunch. A lot of the most recent scholarship says that the people who left slavery, many of them didn't even trace their ancestry back to Abraham and to Isaac and Jacob. They included enslaved people from other backgrounds as well. And even Moses at the burning bush had to ask God, Yahweh, what God's name was. These people didn't know very much about this God except that God was the engineer of their escape from Egypt. God was the one who set them free, which admittedly is a very good starting place. But what it meant to follow that God, what set that God and God's people apart from all others, that crew on the banks of the Red Sea that day didn't have a clue. And that's what the 40 years in the wilderness were all about. God was making them into a people. God was making them into God's people. First Peter 2.10 puts it this way, once you were no people, now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, now you have obtained mercy. The people were changed in the wilderness. As Marple faces its own period of change and transition, one of the questions that I hear most often is, why is it going to take so long to get our next pastor? And one answer is that the, simply that the wheels of Presbyterian process move very slowly. We don't have bishops who say, you, Pastor A, go there to church B. Deal done. Because you, as the congregations, are the ones who's going to be conducting the search with the Presbyterian's oversight. The process is a little bit more complicated, and it takes more time. But I've come to realize, as I've worked with a number of congregations through this process, that that's not necessarily a bad thing. Often, especially following a long pastorate like Karen's, there's work to be done before you're fully ready to welcome your next pastor. You need to be able to grieve and to let go and leave behind what was before you can prepare for what will be. You as a congregation need to figure out who you are as God's people in this place and in this time before you can put together the position description for the pastor that you need and who will lead you there. And you have to leave room for that emotional and spiritual and mental work of transition that has begun with the change in a pastor. And so, sorry folks, whether you like it or not, you're headed into the liminal zone, into the wilderness. Some of you know that when I, I just got back from a trip to Scotland and I spent a lot of time while on that trip, and every time on trains, 
And every time a train pulls into a station in Scotland, you hear the message, mind the gap. And that would be a word I would say to you, too. Mind the gap. Pay attention to what's happening in the gap. Because it's in the gap, whether it's in your life or in the church, that God does some of God's most creative and challenging work. Mind the gap. Because as you step into the gap, as you step into the wilderness, you will be changed. I suspect that you, like the Israelites, will be changed as you go through this wilderness time. And I think that this Exodus story of Moses and the Israelites might have some things to say to you as you go through this time. So that's where we're going to be spending our time during the next few weeks that I'm with you to help you think about what you may encounter on your own journey. This morning, as we get started, though, I want you to draw your attention only to one thing beyond what I've already said. That even before the Israelites cross the Red Sea on dry land, even before they see the waters closing over the heads of the Egyptian army and all its chariots, they're given a sign that they're not alone. They're led out of Egypt with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Signs that, that God is with them. Signs that God, that they barely know, is guiding them on their way. And that same God guides you and goes with you as you enter the wilderness. Now, the signs aren't always quite that visible to us. I wish they were. The times, are, the times are when that cloud might seem a little bit misty and the fire might seem a little bit dim. But if you keep your eyes open, you'll continue to see them. Because God is always there, just one step ahead of us, showing us the way. And all the way through the wilderness, no matter what they did, and they did some pretty weird stuff, God never abandoned those people long ago. And God will not abandon you. So as we enter the wilderness together, I invite you to pray the song that we sang as we began this morning. Let us pray. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, Pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Open now the crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the fire and cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, Strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Be thou still my strength and shield. Amen. At this time, I would like to offer the, uh, invite the officers who are being installed and in, ordained this morning to come forward and stand by the um, baptismal fount.
Please join me in the words that are imprinted in your bulletin as we begin the service of ordination installation. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same spirit who gives them. God works through each person in a unique way, but it's God's purpose which is accomplished. Together we're the body of Christ and individually members of it. Friends, we are called into the Church of Jesus Christ by our baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. That's our common calling to be disciples and servants of our servant Lord. But within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as elders, and ministers of word and sacrament. So ordination is God's gift to the church, making sure that Christ's ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of compassion and caring, ordering the governance of the church, and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Representing the One Church of Jesus Christ, the session of Marco Presbyterian Church now ordained and installed, Patty Works as a deacon, and Paul of Azir as a ruling elder. As God calls some of us to particular forms of ministry, God calls us to all to the bear gladly the yoke of Christ given in the covenant of baptism. Therefore, I invite you um, to confirm your baptismal vows which are the starting points of every other step in the life of faith. Patty and Paul, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciples obeying his word and showing his love, will you? With the whole church, let us affirm our faith. I invite you to stand and affirm your faith using the most ancient creed of the church, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the graduate of says the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I invite all of you to remember your baptism and be thankful. And now I ask you the constitutional questions, which must be answered by all who are ordained in the PCUSA. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior? Acknowledge him, Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by these confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions, will you? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? 
Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church, do you? Will you serve, seek to serve the people with energy and intelligence and imagination and love, will you? Patty, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ, will you? Paul. Will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship and nurture and service? And will you share in government and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? At this time, I invite all who are ordained as elders and deacons to come forward for the laying on of hands as we pray for God's anointing of blessing and power on these newly ordained leaders. And I suggest that you guys move up front so there's plenty of room. Because we were talking the other night, one of the things that I, I love about being Presbyterian is a time like this, you see just how much our ministry is shared with one another as we all offer blessing to one another in leadership. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you for your steadfast faithfulness to us. In every age, you've called for leaders to serve you and you've equipped them with your gifts. Thank you for all who have entered, all, answered your call to discipleship and served you faithfully through the edges. We ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on Patty and on Paul, that they may serve faithfully as, elder, as officers in this church. Give Paul as an elder wisdom in governments and vision for this congregation. Fill Patty with compassion and caring and energy in, in the caring ministry of this church. I give each one of them joy in their walk of faith and a sure sense of your abiding presence as they do their work. Pour out your spirit also on this congregation that we may bear abundant fruit for the spirit here at Marple Presbyterian Church. Make us strong in Christ to live as your people and to bear witness to your saving love in the world. Amen. Patty, you are now ordained a deacon in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Paul, you are now ordained as a ruling elder. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Lord. Welcome to this ministry.
Do you think that's enough church for one day? <laughs> As we conclude our service today, I invite you to share your joys and your concerns with one another. Many of the things that we know about, we've already recognized this day in our worship service. I want to share, you, share with you the um, news that there is one more transition that we need to pray for, and that is that Judy Shank has gone on hospice care. Um, so we ask you to keep Judy and her sons um, in your prayers um, as they prepare for this last great transition. Are there other joys or concerns that we haven't already named that you would like to mention today? Yes, Pat. Okay, prayers for Shirley, who's been sick all week. Let us be gathered in prayer. God of our lives, through all of our years, we trust in you. We thank you for all the comings and goings and ups and downs of life. For all the transitions that we've been able to celebrate this morning, and for, the more difficult, for your presence in the more difficult transitions as well. We pray for all who are finishing school years this week, for those who are transitioning into a new grade or to a new part of life. We ask your blessing and guidance on our children and our youth as they grow in wisdom and in faith. Protect them and guide them as they head forth into the world. We pray for those who are answering the call to ministry in new ways in this church. And we ask your blessing and guidance on all the leaders here, elders, deacons, youth group leaders, all those mu musicians, all those who serve in so, so many ways. We ask that you encourage them in their leadership and guide them faithfully in this time. We pray for those who are struggling this day in their own lives as they face transitions perhaps that were not hoped for or, 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 or anticipated. We ask your blessing for those who need your healing, whether that healing is in body or in mind or in spirit. Today we especially pray for Shirley, for Amy, for Stacy, for Virginia, and for Annie. And as we pray for those who welcome beginnings in life, we also pray for those who are facing endings. And we commend your daughter, Judy, to your care. And we pray for her and for her family as they look ahead um, to her entrance into your kingdom. All these things we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And together we pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is in your bulletin, God be the love to search and keep me. For those of you who say, but isn't that the same hymn we sang last week? Yes. Um, we're trying to learn a new hymn, but also this hymn seems to fit very well for exactly where we are. So we are singing it again this week. I invite you to stand and sing together.
surround us. O oh God, guide us. O oh Spirit, dwell within us as we go forth into the world to love and serve you and our neighbors with love. Amen. <laughs>